Good afternoon. We wish to welcome all parishioners, visitors, and newcomers comers to this celebration of the 13th Sunday in Ordinary Time, which is being celebrated in honor of Father Jonas on his 40th anniversary of ordination. The readings for today's Mass are number 891 in your hymnal. Jesus asks that our response to his call be wholehearted and genuine. During this liturgy, we are reminded that true discipleship means centering our lives on the Lord and following where he leads. Today, we also ask God to bless our pastor, Father Jonas. May he be strengthened by our prayers, nurtured by our gratitude, and renewed by our pledge of support. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, Father. And welcome to the Holy Eucharist. Let us prepare ourselves to celebrate this Holy Eucharist, and let us call to mind our sin. Lord Jesus, you show us the path to life. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you grant us pardon and peace. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you give us the fullness of joy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Thanks for your great 
glory, Lord God, heavenly King, the God Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Emma God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. Lord, the Holy One, you are Lord, are the Lord. You alone are the most high Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Holy Father, who by the merit of my own chose me for communion with the eternal priesthood of your Christ and for the ministry of your church. Grant that I may be an ardent yet gentle preacher of the gospel and a faithful steward of your mysteries. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Reading from the first book of Kings. The Lord said to Elijah, You shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, of Abel Mahola, as prophet to succeed you. Elijah set out and came upon Elisha, son of Shaphat, as he was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen. He was following the twelfth. Elijah went over to him and threw his cloak over him. Elisha left the oxen, ran after Elijah, and said, Please, let me kiss my father and mother goodbye, and I will follow you. Elijah answered, Go back. Have I done anything to you? Elisha left him, and taking the yoke of oxen, slaughtered them. He used the plowing equipment for fuel to boil their flesh, and gave it to his people to eat. Then Elisha left and followed Elijah as his attendant. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, for freedom Christ set us free. So stand firm and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. For you were called for freedom, brothers and sisters, but do not use this freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. Rather, serve one another through love. For the whole law is fulfilled in one statement, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you go on biting and devouring one another, beware that you are not consumed by one another. I say then, live by the Spirit, and you will certainly not gratify the desire of the flesh. For the flesh has desires against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. These are opposed to each other, so that you may not do what you want. But if you are guided by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Spirit come upon you to burn the good news in the name of the Father, the Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He takes away every branch in me and does not bear fruit. And every one that does he prunes so that he bears more fruit. You are already pruned because of the word that I spoke to you. Remain in me. As I remain in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it remains on the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit, because without me you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me will be thrown out like a branch and wither. People will gather them and throw them into the fire, and they will be burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want, and it will be done for you. By this is my Father glorified, that he bear much fruit, and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This could be called Vocation Sunday by the readings. The first one especially, where Elisha is to take the place of the prophet Elijah. Elijah was one of the big prophets. And uh, we celebrate today another vocation, the 40th anniversary of Father Jim's ordination to the priesthood. His sister, incidentally, Christine, is celebrating her 40th anniversary of vows as a sister in the Sisters of St. Joseph, and they have a spirituality that's based on uh, St. Francis. 
Father Jonas has a spirituality based on Jules Chevalier. And this is, you know, if you really, I, I think the most important thing to understand about this, what this is about, is that in, in the history of humanity, what we tend to do is put more stress on doing than being. Solzhenitsyn, his, uh, Alexander Solzhenitsyn, in his address to uh, the, uh, what was one of the big colleges, he, he said, um, hastiness and superficiality are the psychic sickness of the 20th century. <laughs> but that's what happens when you make doing more important than being. And how do we figure this out? Well, every spirituality is based on how a person sees Jesus. The, 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 the um, different orders, like the Benedictine orders, this response to a need and how they see Jesus. The Benedictines, of course, St. Benedict was in a time of chaos and conflict and all kinds of things, and really the loss of all moral sensitivity. So he took off and went to a cave somewhere and eventually started the Benedictines as a response to this secularism and this confusion. And the Benedictines have what? Ora et labora. Pray and work. And the band of Franciscans, of course, came at a time when the, the new merchant class was coming into being, and the whole idea of wealth was not just in possessions, but in, especially in, in the industry, the early industry, and mercantiles. And Francis saw the ordinary person being kind of pushed to the side. And so Francis and the Franciscans really um, they re respond to the need to have respect for every human being, not because of what they have, but who they are. And this is a, this is a very, a little similar to devotion to the Sacred Heart. And you go to the, the Benedictines, or rather the Dominicans, and they saw the need for the gospel to be proclaimed. And the name Domini, Dominicanus means the watchdogs of the Lord. <laughs> name for the Dominicans. And you have the Jesuits. And what did the Jesuits start out to do? They started out to bring the gospel to people everywhere. St. Francis was one of the ones that really uh, uh, epitomized what it was to be a Franciscan. But what does it mean to be a missionary of the Sacred Heart? We just read what it meant to be the gospel according to John. And when you look at this devotion, the spirituality of the Sacred Heart. What we see is being before doing. The being, like in the Old Testament, you had the covenant based on the commandments. What were the commandments? More about doing. In the New Testament, we have the Beatitudes. They're not about doing, they're about being. There's a whole difference. When you emphasize the being, then the doing must follow. You can't just say it's all about being, because, you know, like uh, St. Uh, James said, faith without works is dead. But when you understand the being properly, then your works are made not only more fruitful, but a greater witness to the Lord. And when you see what Father Chevalier was all about, it was essentially about being. That was his first, that was my matter, that you really, celebrated worship to God. And that's the essence of our being. That's the pinnacle of perfection to worship God. You cannot do anything that is of greater transformational value or power or to the glory of God than worship. But he attached to that immediately the imperative of love, that you cannot worship and love God without loving your neighbor. And he said very plainly, by this shall all people know you are my disciples, by your love, one for another. And that's again a being. In fact, when the Lord uh, spoke to Moses, remember that this, there's a, a flaming bush, burning bush, and uh, Moses is trying to, to explain to God why he's a bad choice. You know, he says, well, I'm, I'm, wanted, I'm at the number one wanted list in Egypt. They don't want me. And he spoke with a lift. So he said, you know, I don't speak well. And he goes through all these things. And finally he agrees. The Lord shows him. And then he, he asks the Lord, Who, whom till I, shall I say sent me to the people? And God said, I am who I am. 
I am who am. He's talking about being. He's not talking about doing. He's talking about being. And that's what we must understand, that life essentially is about love. Because God is love. And love is a state of being. When you look at the, what Chevalier was talking about, it's all about being in a relationship to God. We are in a relationship to God. Isn't that amazing? A lot of times people, they, they practice their religion like it's all about following all these rules that are in a book or something. That's not what our religion is about at all. Our religion is about Jesus and about our relationship to him and how he was sent to glorify the Father in all that he said and did. And are we, we are to do the same. The call to a consecrated life that, Jesus, that Jonas responded to is a gift of oneself. That's what, what the religious life is. is. It's, it's not a gift of your time or the gift of the, your everything but your, uh, your, your bankroll. It's not that at all. It's the total gift of yourself. And when you talk about that kind of a gift, it's a way of being. It's like being married. You know, when I, when I used to tell people, <laughs> when they were going to get married, I'd say, now the most important thing about this is that when you get married, it's how do you see yourself? You can no longer see yourself as an individual, as a single person. You will see yourself as being in a relationship, in a marriage. And that's the same with the consecrated life. When you uh, become a religious or into religious life, as Father Jonas and his sister Christine did, it's the gift of their life. Not just what they do, but who they are and why they are. Their whole sense of being, this is the purpose that they embrace for their life. When Father Jonas took the job of being a priest, I think a better word for that from Father Chevalier's point of view is what he says in his daily prayer. Lord Jesus, source of all holiness. The word sacerdos in Latin means priest. And it is, comes from sacer, which is sacred, and dos, which is like you'd say, a shoemaker makes shoes, and a sacerdos makes sacred, makes holy. And here we come now to the final understanding of what Father Chevalier was all about and what Father Jonas follows very sincerely. That whole idea that being with the vine, being one with Jesus. And if we are not one with Jesus, Jesus talks very plainly. Without me, you can do nothing. You can do nothing of value. You can do all kinds of things. And a lot, and a lot of times we do. We put so much stress on doing got to get this and do that and so forth and so on. Hopeless. It's being that matters and then what you do has worth, infinite worth. And that's why when we say may the sacred heart of Jesus be loved everywhere, is that we want people to come into contact, into that relationship with the loving Savior and Redeemer who gives meaning and purpose to life and who came to give us joy that we may have it to the full. And after the Beatitudes, which, as I said, are all about being, you know, being kind, being merciful, being forgiving, and all so forth. After that, Father, Ch Father Chevalier said, let your good works, and since he quotes the Bible here, let your good works be seen by all, that they may see them and give glory to the Father. And so what this means is that when we really want to give witness and, and show what it means, what life means for us. What it means is we show that this is about love. And that this is what, if, if you, whatever you do, if it doesn't have love, it lacks meaning. I want to congratulate Father Jonas and I say, you know, if you, if you really want to know about <laughs> what it means to be a missionary in Sacred Heart, just watch him. He knows. So, uh, the, the, the Gospels of John and the epistles, the three epistles of John, and the letter to the Hebrews are what our founder based his whole life on. The readings of, you know, John speaks of truth almost 30 times. I think over 30 times, actually. And all the other, the, the synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, how many times they use truth? <laughs> Five. Why does John talk about truth all the time? That is being. Truth is love and goodness and beauty and is being. And it's what makes life worth living. And if we're all focused on doing and do this and do that and so forth, sorry, we missed the whole point of living. 
It's the, do, it's the being that matters. And that's what I think when you talk about Father Light, the life of Father Jonas and his sister Christine, it's a life of being. And that makes what they do a manifest and infinite act of glory in the praise of God. So I want to congratulate Father Jonas and his sister and I commend him to your prayers and your invitation. And thank God for missionaries of the Sacred Heart. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God. God are not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified and upon suspired. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and ascended to the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the fire and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world. Lord God, our Father, hear us as we bring to you our needs and the needs of our brothers and sisters in faith, asking your blessing on all here present and all our loved ones. Pope Francis, bishops and priests and deacons, that by sound teaching and loving care, they may be faithful shepherds of God's holy people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all religious, that each one, according to the call of God, may increase the holiness of the church and work in the spread of God's kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all present, that we may be faithful to Christ's teaching as he calls us to be perfect, and that we may grow into the fullness of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For blessings on family, friends, and laity who have always been an important part of Father Jonas's ministry, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Creator God, ever living and true, you have revealed your love for us through word and spirit. Hear our prayers and guide us in right path to the glory you share with the Son and the Holy Spirit forever and ever.
testify you, Lord, with all creation, for through your goodness, when I say the bread, we offer you fruit of the world and work of human hands and the comforts and bread of life. Let it be God forever. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We will accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of the Lord. For our good and good of all those of the Church. Holy Father, whose Son chose to wash the disciples' feet and so set us an example, accept, we pray, the oblation of our service and granted offering ourselves a spiritual sacrifice, we may be filled with the spirit of humility and zeal. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to claim you, O Lord. But it is time above all to love you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of all to fulfillment in the reality of the cross, and by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed, him, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, offer come with Paschal joy. Every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers, the angelic host, sing together in ending hymn of your glory as they are they. Through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, we give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather our people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, our pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy this gift that brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. 
For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, giving you thanks. He said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, giving you thanks. He said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Misery of Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving person of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one Spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph your spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Terry, our, our Alfred, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind of to your kingdom, that we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory to Christ our Lord through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. O him and with him and in him, our God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Forever and ever. Amen. 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 And to save the command and formed by the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to you, the apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter on the fire of the throne, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Say the prayer of St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Let us pray. For the glory of your name, O Lord, we have joyfully celebrated the mystery of faith to mark the anniversary of my priestly ordination, so that I may be in truth what I handled mystically in the sacrifice. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. It is not a second homily, my dear brothers and sisters, but I just a few words before we come to the final blessing. First of all, I would like to thank God for calling me and choosing me to be a priest. I am unworthy servant being called for this way of life, way of being. Sometimes when I go wherever I am sent, I feel unworthy. But like we heard in the first reading today, the prophet Elisha, being called by God, be a prophet. This reading remind me of my own way of life. Again, I would like to emphasize when I see the past, a lot of weaknesses, temptation, to have a strong feeling I'm not worthy for being a priest, but God is the one who make me worthy. That's why it is suitable for me and with you to celebrate the fidelity of God towards me. He chose me, he calls me, and he accompanied me. The first time I tried to become a priest, when I met missionaries of the Sacred Heart in my hometown, I thought we don't have Paris, like a mission a station, a church, there is no rectory, and the priest, when he comes, spend the night, spend the night in our house, because our house next to the church. From there, I learned who are the missionaries of the Sacred Heart. The way they deal with the people, they, the way they serve the people, the congregation inspire me to be like them. They love, their compassion, their friend, being friendly to me, to our family. And they consider us as their own family. In 1982, five of us were ordained. And unfortunately, one among us have gone to see God very early. And now we are four. To summarize my service as a priest in the 40 years, I realized time flies very fast. The first ministry, the provincial and the, the bishop asked me go to seminary, teaching in the seminary. I felt, ah, I have a dream to be in the Paris. Unfortunately, they asked me to be a 
teacher in a minor seminary. After four and a half years, I got news that they asked me to go to India for studying and for being missionaries there in India. Living there, totally different. Different culture, different languages, different rule and regulation. There, I learn from the missionaries of Sacred Heart spirituality. God loves us. We believe and we experience God's love. That reminds me the spirituality of the heart, the spirituality of missionaries of the Sacred Heart. Father Shefali taught and give the example, belief in God's love. And when you learn and experience God's love, you share the fullness of love to the other people. And that's the, our mission, being a missionary service. A heart, sacred heart to remind people that we are being loved. And we, when we are enriched with love, in our turn, we love one another. I went to one place on another basis, studying and working in India for 11 years. Went to another study in Philippines, back to India for another mission, and back to Indonesia. In the last 11 years, I was asked to go to the United States. In 2011, the first time I arrived in Nazareth. I cannot forget. After moving from Central Valley to Nazareth, April 20th, for the first time working and living in Nazareth. What the great consolation was, people in Nazareth are very friendly. People of Nazareth welcoming me and I feel at home. After two years, Prophet asked me to go to Watertown for being a pastor there. At the time of thinking, what will be happen there? But I go back to the spiritual of the heart. Belief in God's love. After eight years, Father Kennedy asked me, Jonas, can you go back to Nazareth? I was so happy because Nazareth is very familiar to me. And here I am. Thank you to the parishioner, pastoral council, co-workers in the office who works with me as a pastor. Thanks to Father Alex, my uh, parochial vicar, and for everyone in Nazareth who make me at home here. But I cannot forget, thank you, first of all, even to missionaries of the Sacred Heart who welcome me wherever I go. You are truly my brother. My brother in faith, my brother in mission, my brother in, how to call it one, in the journey of life. Before I finish, what I would like to say, thank you for your presence today. Your presence make me like uh, Florian said, Father, you are excited, right? Mm. Yes, but you make me more grateful to God who chose me and to work with you. Thank you to the parishioners, pastoral council, co-workers, and everyone in Nazareth. Next, if you see here, 
There is a small group from Indonesian, Catholic Indonesian community from Scranton, from New Jersey, and from Philadelphia. They are reminding me of my mom and dad, my sister and brothers, like I have here in the Holy Family, Nazareth. They, all of you, remind you wherever I go, I will meet my own mother, my own father, my own brothers and sisters because of your love and care. Last but not least, before we come to the final blessing, I would like to thank you to the deacons, uh, Deacon Tom, uh, please, sorry, Deacon Rich and Deacon Mike. They are very faithful to us in serving our parish. Thank you to the altar servers, the altar servers, musician and singer, Bob and Laurie and uh, Bob's uh, girlfriend. Thank you for your service. And I hope I not forget anyone here. Thank you to Florinda and uh, Paris officer and co-workers who uh, make everything today very meaningful. May God bless you. Thank you. The most Father Vince, I should apologize. apologize. Thank you for the homily. <laughs> I don't have a note, so I forgot. Father Vince, thank you. May God bless you. We lived together in Watertown for eight years. He is the one who inspired me how to be the truly missionaries of the Sacred Heart. Thank you. Please stand for the blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Please. Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Still is our